for years. And uh, do you, do you remember what year? I mean, this was this was your your idea. I mean, you're the one who came to me with the with the concept, man, and I was real happy to partner with you on it. Do you remember what year it was when we first started someone making this movie? Yeah, of course, it was 2021. Really? Okay, so it was yeah, right. So it's still out. It was, Okay, post pandemic. Okay, so three years. Ago. It seems like it was more than three years ago. So it was after the pandemic, huh? Or after yeah, kind of like it was after the pandemic. Uh, I was sitting in, in, in one of my properties in the living room, and uh, I remember because I was actually getting that property ready to, for sale. So. Ah, oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 and I and I'm gonna tell you what it's it's been a real uh, it's been a lot of a lot of work, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of. Uh, interesting challenges, and um, and and I'm tell you, it's been a great pleasure working with you on this. Yeah. And uh, before I get too rude, I want to just say hello to some of you that are in the audience. Um, I see a lot of familiar names, and I see Adarika and Afia, Agnes. Uh, who else is in here? Amanda. See, those are just some of the A's. It starts with the A's. Arno. We got a bunch of A's in here. The baby Souter, Barbara. Uh, who else? Uh, Sierra, Carol Heath, uh, Pat Patricia Peters, uh, Albert Robinson, Camelia Harmon, David, uh, Daryl Rice, David D, David Fontenot, Fontenot, I think that's how you say, you say it, David Green, Carol Wiggins, Karen Dorsey. Uh, I see Larry Brown and I see Philly and Sharon and, and Sydney. So, so many of y'all in here, the names are flying up faster than I can actually say them, but I, I just want to take a moment to, uh, to just say hello to everybody and welcome everybody and, and, and uh, let you all know how much we appreciate you being a part of uh, this very special day. And uh, in case you don't know what's about to happen tonight, I know you all normally come in for Powernomics training every Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night, we do Powernomics training in the Black Business School. And uh, make sure you're on the text list so we can notify you when we do this. We've been reading Dr. Claude Anderson books. I don't know if you noticed, Rick, we've been reading Dr. Claude Anderson books out loud in class, educating our own people every week. And we've been doing this for about four years, four or five years now. And uh, And so I thought that that if anybody deserved the chance to see this film uh, now in advance, it would be the folks that are really getting it done. The people that are creating the future, really. I, I you know, when I think about black leadership, uh, you know, I, I can tell you this, we, we figured out what our slogan for this year's all black national convention was going to be. And it is that black leadership starts in the home. And, uh, and because I believe that black leaders, you know, it's not the celebrities it's not the athletes. It's it's the mothers, it's the fathers, it's the counselors, it's the teachers, it's the coaches, it's the activists, it's the it's the pastors, it's the people in the community uh, that are in the house that are that are really, really doing the work. And so I want to celebrate all the black leaders that are in here. Uh, what are your thoughts on some of that, Rick? Ah, uh, man, just um, first of all, let me thank you for uh, sharing your platform and, uh, you know, being a part of this uh, this exciting moment, you know, pre premiering B1 online to uh to your audience you know again you know those uh who may not know me uh again my name is uh dr rick mathis i'm a filmmaker from the west side of atlanta now for my bougie people that's cascade road for my educated gangsters that's adamsville and for my freedom fighters that's west end so as abraham lincoln once said all that i am and all that i ever will become i owe to my mother raised by a single parent who stripped wisdom and tenacity, has been the cornerstone of my foundation. I say I shay to the spirit of Miss Gwendolyn Lewis. Growing up without an earthly father, she introduced me to my spiritual father. So mom, I thank you for the wisdom and affection you gave. My success is a testament to your unwavering love, dedication, and tenacity. So as we journey down this cinematic road tonight, of Dr. Rick Mathis, let us observe the rich tapestry of experiences that have shaped and molded me into the person that I am today. A child from the Atlanta's West Side, driven by the thoughts of carving my dreams and visions into the hearts of many around the world. You know, so with that, I say greetings, greetings, greetings. And uh, this film, B1, is a uh, it's a, it's a, it's, it's the product of a lot of love and labor. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, we put in a, about 18 months, you know, working on this project and uh, it's a fantastic piece, man. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, it touches on a lot of areas that we as black people uh, really need to focus on everything from the media that we consume, the music, the film, the social media, 
uh, everything from the food that we consume, you know, how our health is affected by that, how exercise, how, you know, we need to spend those quiet moments connecting with the inner spirit and the inner voice, you know, and even to the education of our children. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to see all of that tonight in this film, B1, The Code of Blackness. And it even touches on uh, the importance of establishing a Black constitution. And in, this, in establishing this Black constitution, start first with your family. Start first with your tribe. You know what I mean? Because it may not be your blood family, but it may be people that you connect with that you start with and you write a constitution so you can write those amendments, you know, and how you're going to invest and you can revise those amendments if you need, if you need to, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so with that, man, I'm excited, you know, to dive into this, this film, man, be one, the movie code of black. All right. All right. So, uh, all right. So let me, uh, let me, let me kind of kick this off too, uh, as we show the film and it, it, it there's a lot of years of work with a lot of great people. And uh, all the credits, you know, are in the film, and uh, it was um, it, it was a tough project. You know, we shot a lot of the scenes at the All Black National Convention, and uh, I've always told you all that I believe that Black people need art to to have our own media, educate, make our own movies, stuff like that. So that's what we did. Uh, you know, this is um, we we there's several projects. I know Rick has done a, quite a few with the Black Friday series, and and then you you had some others, right? Right, Rick. Yeah, so we uh, so of course we had the Black Friday series. We uh, produced uh, the Bowleg story with uh, Marvin Arrington Sr., who was a very uh, prolific man right here uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Man, he was responsible for uh, helping Muhammad Ali get his license, his boxing license back, and that fight was held right here in Atlanta at the Omni Coliseum. You know, back in the day. Uh, so he was very instrumental. He was uh, he was a judge. He was the one that uh, asked all of the white people to leave the courtroom so that he can talk to the black guys that had been arrested and that he had seen coming in and out of his courtroom. He caught a lot of flack for that. You know, so we've uh, so we produced that project uh, along with some other projects and, and, uh, and series and things like that that I had the opportunity to work on. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I tell you, we um, uh, we we appreciate everybody in here for participating in this. And uh, and I can tell you that this film is really, really good. And and if you want to know some of the thinking behind it, uh, our goal was to say, OK, we don't really care. Y'all know y'all know in this space, we don't really care about uh, being mainstream and all that stuff. We We don't you don't automatically become a black hero just because white people put you on TV. That's not how we operate. We look for the people. That were, to be in this film that were truly in the community, really doing doing their best work, really representing the community in the best way, and uh, a lot of these faces will be very familiar to you. And uh, so these are our superstars; these are the people that that we uh, know of, know of and admire. And uh, and I'll tell you what, <clears throat> it's um it's it's something that I think we have to be very intentional about. We have to choose our own heroes. We have to choose our own leaders. And, and if somebody doesn't work for you, that's fine. You could you just pick somebody else. But at the end of the day. We can't just look to other people, to the oppressors, those who benefit from taking our wealth, destroying our health, destroying our communities, breaking up our families. Those people who benefit by using us, those are not the people who have our best interests at heart. So uh, a lot of this film centers around that. It's centered around one very basic idea. What does it mean for us to be on code? What does it mean for us to have uh, stronger families, stronger communities, and to just be better off? What does that look like? And in fact, actually, I'll ask you all a question just to kind of do a consciousness exercise before we, to get us ready for this film. How many of you, yes or no, how many of you feel that black people are, have been made better off in the last 30 or 40 years? Yes or no? Uh, give me a yes if you feel like we are just so much better off in almost every way or if we if, if, or if we've been it's been a little bit disappointing. Give me a no if you feel like there's there's a lot of work to do. Uh, do you feel like we're better off educationally? Let's start there. How many of you feel like we're getting a better education now than we did, say, before in the 1960s? Uh, do you feel like we're better off health wise? Are we healthier? Are we living longer? Is our mental health better? Uh, what about our wealth? Is our wealth going up or is our wealth going down? It, it, and these are important questions to ask because when everybody comes and tells me, uh, they show me symbolism to say, oh, black people are doing so great. Things are so much better now. I'm like, okay, show me the evidence. They can't. 
They really can't. They can't show me where we're healthier. They can't show me where we're wealthier. They can't show me where our kids are getting a better education. They can show us, show me where our families are better off. Our families are more stable. That's not happening. So, so we have to do that. We got to take the charge, take the lead. So I just want to say this. Well, we, we ain't got no version that we, you'll never see any version of perfection or perfect black leadership of in this space. If you, if your goal is to criticize how we do it, what we do or whatever, you, you'll be able to criticize all day because I ain't never been perfect and I never claim to be. But one thing I can tell you is that I'm always do my best. And that's all I ask any of you in here with your children, do your best. When it comes to breaking generational curses, just do your best. When it comes to being a positive influence in the lives of others, just do your best. When it comes to moving forward, moving our people forward, just do your best. So that's it. Black first, do your best, and then let the rest, let God handle everything else. Okay, so Rick, uh, if it's okay with you, man, uh, I, I would like to show the film. I want everybody to know that some of y'all watching on YouTube, I cannot show this film on YouTube uh, so I'm going to have to shut off the YouTube feed. What I did do for you all that are on YouTube, though, is I am sharing the link right now in the YouTube chat, and it is a Zoom link. So if you click on that Zoom link, that Zoom link will bring you into the private Zoom because sometimes you got to have a private conversation. Sometimes you can't you can't have everything out there available for everybody on the Internet. Uh, YouTube is watching. Google's watching all these all these big brothers are watching the conversations and sometimes black folks have to have our own conversation in our own honest way. So, so but everybody's welcome. So that link is right there. So come on in and uh, you can join us and we're going to, we're about to start the film right now. So Rick, uh, if you don't mind brother, uh, I, I, I'm going to turn off my audio and my video. And then uh, if you could uh, turn yours off that way, we can, um, and uh, let me see, I'm going to turn off my video here and I'm turning off my audio now. So I want y'all, if y'all could do me a favor, when I start playing the film, Give me a yes in the chat if you can hear it. Um, I'm assuming you can hear it. I'm gonna, I got to turn up as loud as it'll go. Let me know. Give me a quick yes if you can hear it okay, all right? And uh, everybody on YouTube, I'm going to uh, shut off the, that YouTube feed right now. So come on in and join.